Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. This week, we are going to be talking about cards in Commander that had an initial negative reaction. These are Sky is Falling, falling cards. Sky is Falling cards, basically cards that had a very bad negative reaction from the community when they were previewed, but then when they came out, when they were released, they didn't really have that big of an impact on the format as a whole. So we're just going to be talking about like those type of cards, uh, and we're kicking things off with a spicy one that recently got previewed in in, in the upcoming set, uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One. Uh, so joining me, as always, for this grand debate is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How's it going, Seth? I am doing great, Tomer. Super hyped for this uh, this topic. It should be a, a spicy one. Oh yes, oh yes. There's going to be some feathers ruffled and some some differing opinions for sure. Uh, and joining me for ruffling these feathers is Krim, aka the Asian Avenger. Oh, How's it going, Krim? I never ruffle any feathers. No. <laughs> Second off, also, Tomer, can you just yell Skyfall like James Bond for for this one? Because I mean, this Wasn't is the that perfect Adele thing. song. Yeah, yeah. Because now yeah, this no, is the Skyfall Sky episode, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, no, yeah can you just sing Adele for no, me real I'll quick? <laughs> I'm not perfect. a singer, there but that was it. <laughs> there you that go. was that was that's the James Thank Bond you. intro. Thank I you. remember that one. All right. Thank you. It was, it was a good one. We have to do like a tier list of James Bond uh, intro <laughs> songs at some point. <laughs> the people just love, sure. like and subscribe. Yeah, if, sure. uh, yeah we will. Like, we'll get right on it. Like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want to see a James Bond music intro <laughs> tier list. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, Phil can help us with uh, that tier yeah, list yeah, as well. Yeah, Phil, like a Bruce Kitchen, uh, which is which is your favorite uh, Bond song? I, I haven't. I, I have seen it Skyfall, so I guess this one. All the all of the ones that I've seen were great. By the way, I just I, mm-hmm. I'm not the big movie guy. Just are they plain. as good as your shirt? I, I wish I could. <laughs> Say something Wait, funny about this. What's on your shirt for the listeners, Phil? Why don't you for tell the them listeners at home? Yeah, they don't know what you're wearing. Why don't you tell them what you're wearing, real quick? <laughs> I, it's, it's I, these what, nuts, what sure. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you about what is it? The goblin, the mind goblin. Yeah, yeah I was oh uh, thinking god. about asking you oh about a CD I or something. The, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I had no idea about this this <laughs> meme and like there's an infinity card which is like blank goblin oh, it was not, a sticker. Yeah, I thought you were. Like wait, asking you people. were being serious. I thought that was a troll tweet, and you were just trying to get people no. going. You really didn't know. Why what was that it? Was. <laughs> hey guys, what's the mind goblin? <laughs> I'm, not really, I'm, I'm like, being I'm serious. Not, oh, not I thought you were having the engagement. <laughs> I thought I, you were trolling. I oh asked my, my boyfriend. He did, he legitimately did not know. And then I asked my friends on, on on in our WhatsApp group, and they they refused to say. And they said, "Ask Twitter." <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine, I'll ask for it. <laughs> and I Google search. Oh, that I makes it so much better. A, a result. Anyway. I, yes. Oh, God. I'm on the other side of that where everything on the internet, I assume, yeah, just yeah. leads to a D's Nuts joke. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah, hold on. I have to think about this. I read this oh, comment man. real quick. Right, so I got, I got publicly humiliated. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, we'll move on to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to our, our subject at hand, and that is uh, Sky is Falling Cards. And this Skyfall. kind of topic this topic kind of got uh, brought about because recently we got some preview cards for Phyrexia All Will Be One, including the new white Praetor card, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, let me pull up the card. Uh, for those the who don't Karn. know what the card does, the Karn, well, maybe the new Karn as well. But anyway, uh, for those who don't know what the new card does, it is a five mana, uh, four and a white, four, seven legendary creature Phyrexian Praetor with Vigilance and has two abilities or two, uh, two other abilities, rather. Uh, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. And permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponents control to trigger. So all your permanents trigger an additional time and your opponents do not trigger at all. Uh, So good for you, bad for your opponents, essentially. Uh, Five mana, four, seven, Vigilance. Um, So apparently, like I thought this, when I saw the card, I thought, oh, this is a cool card. And I moved on with my business. But... Apparently, not a lot, not everyone in the community saw it the same way. And some people thought 
that is a lot stronger, including uh, one of the Rules Committee uh, people, uh, Sheldon Mennery. And he wrote an article on Star City Games basically saying uh, that uh, when he saw the card, because the Rules Committee gets to see the card in an, these see these cards in advance, uh, so these standard cards in advance, uh, to give their their opinion on it in terms of like what its impact in Commander would be. He told uh, the designers at Wizards of the Coast, don't print this. Please don't print this card. Literally, that's what he said. Um, and then, uh, since that didn't work, uh, and they're, they previewed it anyway, uh, he basically mentioned that this card would be really bad. Uh, he heavily implied that if he had sole, uh, sole, uh, uh, the final saying basically what is banned and not that he would he would have this card banned essentially but he's only one of i think six people now in the rules committee so he's only one vote uh, amongst everybody uh but basically he's very anti this card he thinks this card is far too strong uh it's too well costed for both being uh, a super panor monocon on your end and also uh also at the same time shutting down opposing decks at the same time for five mana it's just too strong uh and it's too generically good he says and it means basically he thinks it's going to show up it's too good to, and it will show up in basically every single white deck so therefore this card is going to have a very negative impact on uh commander he predicts and he admits that obviously, like you know, he's not he's not he's not banning the card, obviously. But if he had it his way, essentially, no. uh, he would. Um, yeah, that that came out as as a shock to me. But what what do you all think about this card? Like, do you agree with with these assessments in in the article? I mean, this game is a huge shock to me because I didn't see backlash about this card. Did I? I saw people mostly hyped about this card. Did I miss it? Like, was there some big? outcry about this being busted and problematic in commander before sheldon wrote an article and and caused a huge conversation about this card that's that's kind of what i was wondering like when did this happen i i didn't see any of that all of this came after the article that's what i that's how i saw it unless maybe i missed it. i even tried to go back as we were preparing for this podcast and look through the original Reddit spoiler post yes. when Alice Norn first went up to try to see, like, were a lot of people freaking out? And there were some people who were like, wow, this is really good. Like, this is super strong. Yeah. But overall, it seemed neutral to positive. It was mostly, like, Panermana mom jokes was most <laughs> of the threads. So it wasn't like everyone was saying, oh, this is busted. This is bad. This is busted. So I... <sighs> I don't know. Like, to me, it seems like a huge overreaction. And it's to me, it's scary because out of every human being in the whole world, Sheldon does have the most power to ban a card. Like, he might not be able to just, like, by himself ban a card technically, but he's like he really is the leader of the RC. He's the founding whatever father of commander. Like, out of all the humans in the world, he does have the most influence to ban a card. So as someone who loves Panharmonicons, it kind of scared me to see that article be like, saying the things that it said honestly so for me the he has like more power than anybody in the rules committee he's just one of six votes but he's the most public facing i would say (sighs) that that sounds about right yeah like he's the most public facing yeah but i mean there's like like the the father i guess or something like that or sure yes he likes (sighs) he likes being the spotlight for sure but Mm as when the card got released i haven't seen so when I think about facing this card, this literally shuts down 75% of my It shuts down decks. Phil. Uh, <laughs> I think the only one And is, you, Seth. <laughs> yeah, Seth as well. But on the other hand, I thought like, well, if I'm in the colors, that's an amazing card for me. Uh, I don't know why they ask the rules committee to what they should ban if Biorhythm is banned. I don't get this whole aspect of it. And I kind of don't think they listen to them because why would they i don't know but the problem with this card is it like the people who fear it like me i also love it because of the other side of the card so it like balances (laughs) out but it's not like it's the worst card in commander and the worst card in commander is legal and it's probably heuristic study or (laughs) smothering type but it's it's close but it's it's like elish non is nothing close to this and I don't think it's going to be like a ubiquitous staple because, yeah, it's like most decks don't use ETB effects. Like there's a lot of staples that do, but just because I play a Eternal Witness doesn't mean I slap this 
$50 card or whatever it's going to be in my deck. Uh, the only real criticism I has of, has, have is that it's one white mana. Uh, it's it's small, but it looks weird on the card. I think a Praetor should cost... I don't know. It's It might just be an aesthetic issue, but I, I don't yeah, like that. It's you, just you, want, you want like the double tip there or yeah. something just for... <laughs> It just looks so weird. They should have uh, sure. had the anthem as well. The same static effect is a lot. I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Elish Norn is a strong card. I think it is strong, and there probably will be some games yeah. where it's unfun for someone's deck. Yeah. Like, it's probably going to be unfun for my deck sometimes where I'm trying to play a Panharmonicon deck and someone sticks this against me. Although, it's a creature that I can kill. It's not like some indestructible <laughs> hexproof enchantment or something. Like it is just a thing that dies to a sweeper or a removal spell. So it's hard for me to imagine it being that good, especially when you mm -hmm. consider past Praetors like Shieldred Strong. And it's in what, 5% of decks? Original Aljorn, really strong. It's on the saltiest cards list. It's iconic. It's in like 7% of decks. So it's hard for me to imagine this Elish Norn is going to be you know, literally showing up in every deck and 50% of decks like Soul Ring and just mm. warping the commander meta. Like, the cards don't do that. Commander is too big of a format and there's too many options and too many play styles for even a very powerful card most of the time to actually warp the format and ruin the format. I, that, that's also kind of touches upon like the, the biggest complaint I have in the entire article. Like, I agree this card is very good. I think it's going to see play in a lot of decks, but I don't think it's an auto include in all white decks. Far from it. Like, I looked at my own list. Like, how many, how many cards have to benefit from its triggered ability for it to be worth running in your deck? And I would say like 15 or higher, something like that. Uh, which most of my decks do not have. Like, if I'm in a landfall deck, then it's great. If I'm an enchantress, it has lot, lots of the enchantress effects that are ETB. Even, no, wait, even that's only like two. So, no, I scratch that, actually. Uh, but, like, blink decks, obviously. Um, and landfall decks, obviously. And, and maybe like, some other decks. I don't know. Panoronicon like, decks. Like, if you're actually yeah, build around yeah. ETB triggers, it's very good. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Like, would you just jam this? as a hate card you're like oh i have no. a couple of things in my deck with etb so i'm gonna if that was the case why wouldn't torpor orb a colorless two mana spell be a staple if like that effect is so strong that every deck should be running it why does no one play torpor orb in commander well i think the difference here is elish norn does shut off you know only your opponents whereas torpor orb shuts off everything mm. Uh, well, what about Dranith and, Magistrate? And like, Dranith Magistrate <laughs> isn't seen at every single table, but it's very effective, and it only shuts off your opponents. Because when people actually sit down and play against it, it's just not that good. Like, like it's just flat out not that good. I, I Dranith Magistrate's a 1-3. <laughs> like, that that <laughs> will kill you. <laughs> um, uh, but but I think Elish Norn is actually a little bit more powerful than a, a Dranith Magistrate, but not enough to where, so. like, like, I... I I don't think that it's like it warrants the level of like response, but I will say it is pretty it's a it's a haymaker. Oh yeah. Um and I definitely do think that you would wanna play this in a good amount of white decks. Um so is it an auto include? I don't know if it is, but it it's looking pretty good. So maybe, uh, like, we'll see as it comes out, right? I, I could eat my words. Is the worst card ever or it could be the, even better than we think? But mm -hmm. as of right oh. now, I am keeping an eye on the fact that it does say a permanent entering the battlefield. So that is pretty good across any white deck because whether it's an enchantment deck, usually let's just say like an O-ring effect, uh, that could then cause like you to exile and then you could do some weird shenanigans to where you flicker the O-ring. Now two things have been exiled, exiled permanently, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I I don't know. There, there's a lot here to, I, I actually, yeah. The more I think about it, this card is pretty darn good in almost every white deck. <laughs> in, in every white deck, deck. yeah. I mean, it's the pretty effect, darn good. Like even the stacks effect, you can't neglect this. I I think if you come away from this podcast saying like, oh, I don't have to worry about this card. Whenever it hits the table, somebody will be host by it, and you will probably get some value out of it. And it's on a pretty good body, especially if you are like the enemy. At least you have a five seven or whatever vigilance threat. I I think it's an amazing card. I just don't think everybody will play it. Like some cards, especially if it gets that much hate, uh, you don't want to put this on your friends every game. I hope <laughs> at least. 
So uh, even if I had a smothering tide, I wouldn't play it just because yeah, you're just like the enemy then. Even if <clears throat> even cards that are super good aren't that heavily played in Commander, that's just kind of the nature of the format. Like maybe the data we have isn't good enough, but Eternal Witness is a card that I think you literally should play in every single deck. If you have green mana all the way up to five colors, like it's just so good at what it does. There's almost no reason not to play it or Esper Sentinel would be another example. And those are at like 25% of decks according to EDH Rec. So I imagine the worst case scenario, quote unquote, worst case is Ellis Jordan. Let's say it's in 25% of decks that could play it. Let's assume that happens. Let's assume it's a high end of power. It's the what Sheldon is worried about power level. Is that a problem? Like, is everyone, is 25% of decks running Elish Norn, does, is that actually, is that going to kill Commander? Does that mean? That would actually that, be bad for me, honestly. <laughs> like if, if, <laughs> that's, so that the thing is, you? yeah, I as I mentioned, like, most of my deck are heavily reliant on ETB effects. Um, so while I don't condone any banning in Commander, if I had the choice that this card would have never be printed with this text, I would probably say, nah, don't do it. <laughs> um, but I would do this for a lot of cards. Like, Dockside would have, wouldn't have been printed, for this example. Blank's Dockside. Uh, I mean, a five mana so blank on dark yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, know. <laughs> I, mean, I have to wait until my removal spell to dark side you. Oh, oh no! Yeah, but now that it's printed, it's like yeah, it's not the biggest problem. And if we start saying like, oh, we don't like this card, we just ban it, that just opens a can of worms. That has already been opened, but it's not healthy for the format. Best case, everybody would just play the decks that are fun for everybody and. <sighs> Yeah, that's you need to shut down good. a Mirum. This this thing, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I, like, isn't this? I think. I mean, I think good. it's good. It is. I think it's good. There's. I think it's good, good, but like the 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 issue of why it's bane worthy according to Sheldon is that it's going to be very popular, and it lowers the variety in Commander because if a card is too popular and it's essentially an auto include in most decks, then you're cutting down the variety. And that's like reiterated upon a couple times in the article, which makes me kind of like go bananas because like, you know what card is played more? You know what card's played in 84% of all decks in EDH rec? It's a little ring. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah that might Soul, be Soul ring. ring. It's Soul ring. 84%. It, go, it could go into literally any deck. It's, it's the most ubiquitous card <laughs> imaginable. And it, it, everybody, everybody runs it. Like, yeah. you have to have a reason not to. There's, like, very small percentage of decks that would want not to run it. And it's like, but Sheldon, you're complaining about ubiquity. Oh. And I, 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 Soaring's I, right there. I think the reason why that is, though, is because I I think, I, from what, I assume, what I've seen and observed far, this is my opinion, Commander's mentality is it's better for more cards that do as opposed to don't enablers as opposed mm-hmm. to like you know things that stop things mm-hmm. things that say no are not exactly <clears throat> like enjoyed so mm-hmm. <clears throat> like things that allow you to do enablers are are okay if they're ubiquitous so soul mm-hmm. ring allows you to do nonsense dark and side I think, allows you to do nonsense and i think that's why people love these yep. cards and it's accepted right like mm-hmm. but, but like cards that say don't which i think are needed in commander are not allowed and and just hmm. frowned upon. So I think this is a that like I do wonder why this is getting any complaints because I think cards that say no are needed in Magic. So surprise, by the way. Yeah, I know, I know. I <laughs> I, I, th- I like totally. This this is literally my my how my hypothesis on how how the entire RC works is like any card that lets that does crazy things for you is great as long as it doesn't affect your opponents too much. Like a one shot removal, that's fine. But anything that like shuts them down from uh, for a turn or two until they can find an answer, that is not fine. Like this Elish Norn could have just said, "I'm a triple Panarmonicon." Like if you would ever, if a, something would trigger, you do it triple yes. times, and people oh in God. Sheldon would be like, "This card's great. Yes. This is fine." Yes. It could have been like a two mana triple Panarmonicon, and Sheldon would have been like, "This card's this is awesome. Great. Good job, Wizards of the Coast. Please print more." But because it also says it has a torpor orb effect on your opponents, that's when Sheldon and the RC is like, nah, nope, nope, hate this, don't like this. And I think that's, that's, that's where like the balancing point, 
uh, is for for the commander philosophy right now. It's like you can do busted things as long as you're not affecting your opponents, stopping them from playing magic too much. I mean, they if it costs seven mana, that would be fine. But I do think that five mana is actually it. Like it's a huge. Play. I think one Richard said this in the other podcast. Like it doesn't even feel epic anymore. You play like mid range, shieldred, and then you got okay, boring Clex is six mana, but. I think that even this effect could easily cost six. And six it would be the cutoff where I'd say, yeah, then it can have this Dex effect. Five on turn four, maybe even three. It but will be for fleas. It makes sense, though. Because, I, I mean, like, I know that uh, Praetors are meant to be big and powerful, right? And, like, this big bomb thing. But, yes. like, they are always evolving and adapting and getting more powerful. So yeah, more like, what is Make what's, it cost 10. Let's go. So, no, 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 no. That, <laughs> let, let's be real here. Real power means I'm actually going to play the card without cheating it out, right? Ah, just yeah. but that's, <laughs> And Urbra is so bad. So that means oh, that's yeah. <laughs> we also have to remember this that thing. this is not just a commander card. Like, this is a card that's for other formats. Yeah. And as right. much as Sheldon might want every single card to only care about commander because no other format matters uh, in the mind of the RC, like, that's just not the world we live in. Standard's a thing. Legacy's a thing. There are other people who enjoy playing Magic in ways that are different than the commander RC. And Wizards should design cards for those people, too, not just for <laughs> just for the vision of, you know, commander in the RC's mind. Don't worry, yeah. uh, Sheldon actually covers that in the article. He says, I, he, he basically says, I'm not saying verbatim, but he says he acknowledges the fact that some like standard cards are made not just for Commander in mind, like they're made for other formats. But then he also says, like, it would in the be same foolish breath, if every card be foolish. didn't consider Commander. Yeah, like, Commander. Yeah. So it's like a so backhanded like, way of like, I know I have to say this, but really we all know that. Yeah, I don't it's mean commander it, though. And, you know, like, screw the rest of you. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to acknowledge that cards can be for other things, but also <laughs> cards shouldn't be for other things. But listen to my Commander takes. <laughs> Don't print uh, this, please. It just it just bothers me because I'm hyped to play this card in standard. And the idea that, like, oh, yeah. oh we should make it nine yeah. mana because commander, you know, maybe players don't like Torpor orbs and commander or someone might interact with me. Like, okay, uh, so and, then the post, that. and then Wizards <laughs> post tweets that are like, why is standard dying? Why is standard not doing well? Maybe because you make everything nine mana because commander no, no, players I, can't deal with a Torpor orb. I got a compromise for you, Seth. I figured so it out. I imagine figured it it's out. a triple Panamonicon, though, for seven mana. Same stats. <laughs> triple Panamonicon for you. Maybe post the. But imagine yeah, the value five. once you untap it. So, <laughs> I mean, a triple Panamonicon would be super sweet. But at the same time, the whole gimmick of Praetors is like, do the good thing for me yeah, and the yeah. bad thing for you. Like, every Praetor has that formatting. So I think if Elish Horn was Urbrask. just like. Urbrask like hurts your opponent and helps you. You're yeah. just, I Urbrask mean, it's not hurts, powerful, hurts, but <laughs> hurts you and helps your opponent. The new one, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, okay, I mean, okay, you're, you're not yeah. allowed to I, hurt your five, too five much. mana and my turn, and then, and then now it's your <laughs> turn. That's, that's the one it's, new Urbrask. It's literally the RC philosophy: is you can't affect my my board states too much. You know, you can do it a little bit, but if you do too much, I'm going to complain. Uh, but so, you can do the most busted thing. Like you could have, you can have a better dock side. You can have a dock side that also ETP draws three. Cards. Oh god! Uh, okay. And it'd be two okay. mana, and it'll be. Fine. Do you think that? It'll be fine. Do you think that? Does that lead to a fun format? <clears throat> like, I don't know. Like, are we just missing it when it comes to commander or like Crim's idea that we need to be able to interact and like that's what makes a good format? Like, are we just I mean, in the minority to think that way? And everyone else in commander thinks. We should just, you know, hands off. Everyone tries to combo off and we'll see what happens and then do it again. The biggest the biggest mark against <laughs> like no cards and like like controlling cards is that, well, a lot of people like, you know, example, like we do play commander a lot all the time. So people play one game a week or maybe even a month or every two weeks. Right. So the one game they run into a stacks piece, you know, or something like that, a, a no piece that that dampens the experience. But I don't know. I mean, like, do, if I played, like, Magic just for, like, once a month even or whatever, right? Like, I mean, I, it, 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 this is a philosophy thing, right? Like, I enjoy interactive Magic, and it, it's going to change person to person. So e even if it were once a year, I, I want interaction. I like back and forth. When I watch a sports game, I don't want to see just one team get stomped out. I want to see some pushback, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's against my favorite team, okay? Maybe, maybe you know, calm down against my team, but like, uh, like, like, yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, that's why I, the way I look at games and magic and like whatnot is that there's back and forth, or there should be. 
that it shouldn't just be like, ha, huh, I'm the villain. I'm going to announce my plan. I win the game. Right. Exactly. Like, I, I, right? Like, why, why would you want that? Like, w- every show would end. Like, hey, by the way, I'm tying this person to the train tracks. All right. That's it. See you later. <laughs> Imagine, like, I feel like, I feel like if we continue to, like, punish anything that, like, negatively affects our opponents, we're going to have just these one-sided games where, like, one person pops off super hard because our accelerants are so good, our card draw is so good, our resource uh, generation and spending ability in this game, in this format, is so powerful that, like, whoever, you know, gets that amazing start gets to pop off turn three or four or five or whatever, whatever have you, and the other people don't get to play magic. It's not that they they got shut down. No, God forbid. Like, your permits haven't been touched or anything. Your hand hasn't been, hasn't been discarded or anything like that. But you literally just didn't have as quick a start as the opponent who got to pop off, do their thing, and then, okay, now we shuffle up and play and, and move on to the next one. I much prefer games where we sit down and each person gets to have some plays, gets to do show a little bit of their deck at the very least, and then somebody wins the game and you shuffle up after that. Like I want to see every I want to see a little bit of everybody's deck, you know, before the end. I don't want this like <laughs> we're all in different rocket ships and we're all just si- like seeing who can who can get to the and, like the moon faster. Like that, it's that makes you a dumb. spike because you believe in interacting and you have to care. Like if you believe in interaction, that means you only I value winning. No, but if you if you have additional, you're not gonna see my deck do a thing. I think that's the problem Sheldon has with it. I think yeah, you, like the but, super popular but, and honestly pretty cool panomotic panomotic con effect is stapled to a accidental tax stack piece like i don't think if you play a blink deck you just play this card because it's one of the best cards in your deck and accidentally yeah. your friend who plays also loves this deck their whole deck doesn't work anymore and you didn't even <laughs> intend to do this you wanted to panamonicon number two but now but- the opponent doesn't have fun and you have even more fun and they would see you go off and you don't see their deck like it Honestly, but then you just non- run more removal. Like, oh sh- I, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I run like, a like a shriek. You do you have like a lot of removal. Well, no, but like, like run. <laughs> no, but run. you you run Pongify and rapid hybridization no, in your Lona deck, I, don't you? This, oh, this my Lona deck is... just scoops to this. Nah, no, no, I can just hop to card. Oh. Maybe I can bounce. Yeah, but you you memories. can just add a couple more cards and lay some tutor yeah, effects to find the removal spells. <laughs> it's this, I'm this just see, exactly there. It. See, like this this is the same thing as when like There's, I remember that one week we had a Krim week. Tomer brought a super friends deck and I like I had an immortal son and I was like, Oh, and he's like, Oh, I didn't actually pack a non planeswalker way to deal with artifacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had like an I had like Ugin and, and Karn in my deck to deal with like <laughs> you know, anything. To deal with anything essentially. I was ready for that basically. But I didn't even run like a chaos warp. But yeah. like, is but, like it, isn't it good like, that like players should have a little bit more of a plan B in their decks? Like, yeah. Like I have, don't lose to rip. Deck. If you have a graveyard deck, don't lose to rest in peace. Yeah, you, you, I, that is a big thing that you should factor in, right? But so, like, how many cards do you like? Even if you run, <clears throat> also, yeah, I do have bounce spells and stuff, and I I will be able to fight it if I have my entire deck in hand. But I, if I have a theme to my deck, I'm not gonna dedicate like five card slots that are completely out of theme. Like, oh yeah, I also play this <laughs> Terminator, you know, you know like theme? Actually, doing the theme. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that, if my so that, theme is bouncing, why. I play a Ravenous Trooper cover and say, oh, this works so cool mm-hmm. with my deck. I love it in this deck. And I play this in this deck because otherwise I would play Swords or something, but not in my Blink deck where I want my deck to synergize. And if you tell the player, no, no, you got to have like these few staples that are just, just removal for anything. You have that in every deck, so you don't, you can't complain about it. I don't, it's like there is a point to saying that oh this might have not been necessary like if a hush bringer hits the board i'm just going to sit there and say please please just somebody kill this i'm just gonna <laughs> fall to this but, but, but couldn't you uh i get what you're saying about themes but i guess i kind of think of it the the crim way where it's like i need to dedicate some slots to like oh, making my do, deck yeah. function so i can yeah, so i can like do the cool slots. flavorful themey thing three in a hundred cards that i like how many slots oh, do oh, you yeah, yeah. do you need so you don't need to complain i, I can sure yeah, i have yeah, an instant that bounces something, <laughs> something but. i mean can 
complaining is is fine i think that's actually one of my takeaways from this topic that we haven't gone to yet i think yeah. i think complaining is actually super legit if you don't like a magic card so yeah, if there sure, is yeah. backlash i think that's I, I mean that's a legitimate thing to do yeah i, I surely complain. have never complained about any magic card <laughs> yeah. we're magic like, players of course we complain about things <laughs> I, I i'm also just kind of like used to getting hosed too like like i play an artifact deck. i don't remember the last time i played a game <laughs> where my artifacts didn't get board wiped like it's just, it's just it just always happens. Like I I go into every game with my artifact deck, knowing that at some point my board is going to get blown out, just blown out. And so yeah. what I did is I adapted to an extent as I run more mass mass graveyard recursion because I know my board is going to get vandal blaster or whatever or a steer command. More recently, I'm getting farewelled, and now if I know like somebody's on white, I'm going to like try to play around it to an extent. Where, like, maybe I won't vomit out all my hand. Maybe I'll have a backup card draw engine in my hands so that if I do get farewelled, I can play that afterwards. Sometimes I get caught. Sometimes I get double farewelled. One time I got triple farewelled. It was, like, two weeks ago uh, at play-in at, uh, in, over in Paris here. I got triple farewelled. It was miserable. But, like, you know, Ooh. I'm an artifact deck. Obviously, You, it's you really loved goodbyes, huh? You really loved yeah, goodbyes. I don't like I mean, saying goodbye. That's why. <laughs> that, yeah, you don't like don't saying say it, but you farewell. love. <laughs> Please don't say farewell. Please. Where does farewell fit into this? Like, speaking of cards that just, like, yeah. shut people down permanently and just, like, totally ruin someone's day, why is that not a card people freak out about? Why I is, like, oh, your Muldrifter is just a, a creature and it's not drawing you two cards, like, a problem, but all your stuff is exiled and gone forever. Oh, like, oh yeah. Play more of that. <laughs> it's the same as the counterspell removal thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Like the illusion that you did something. And but I your Elish Norn still lets you do things. Like your creatures resolve. It's not countering yeah. them. You're not drawing the cards <laughs> with your Moldrifter, but your Moldrifter, creature is five mana but, two two pass. <laughs> what if you're what if you're a Voltron deck and somebody like Oubliettes your commander? You know, I mean, now you're yeah. like, I don't play I don't my deck doesn't function without my commander. It's gone until I find an enchantment. Is that Honestly, okay? Like, farewell probably shuts down more people than Elish Norn will ever. <laughs> like, like, it'll it just kind of get people, and it, it will wreck a multitude of people. I, it is the sweeper, right? So, like, if there's things that we should be talking about when it comes to this, like sky falling kind of like theme, sky like falling. things that'll ask sky fall. Uh, an actual thing that will cause the sky fall is farewell. Things like that. So many cards on this. Uh, <laughs> list which i think we should move on to uh move on yeah, from this yeah. card now uh like I, like Oof. the next one i i okay i was in the camp of this next card like having just being like absurd but that's because there's a forest symbol attached to it. <laughs> so so uh but like yeah it's bootlegger stash yes this card is but what does this card do uh, it, yeah like this this card is a six mana artifact <laughs> Six mana artifact, yes, and it is uh, like what you can tap lands, right? And or lands you control have tap yeah. create a treasure token. Yes, so five and a green lands, lands you control have tap create a treasure token. Right, so you can store up mana. And, uh, like, I, I, I thought this was going to be absurd because I thought, although it's a six mana, every deck was just going to drop it on turn three because it's green. And so <laughs> I just, I don't know, I just assume anything that's high mana is free in green. So, like... <laughs> I just don't understand when, like, when any green players like I, I can't cast. It's like, what do you mean? That's just like wrong. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> so like, yeah, like the the thing about this is this is a card that I think everyone thought would just be absolutely busted, right? Yeah, this I mean, I, I thought I, this was gonna be really I good. I knew this was trash. I'm, I'm gonna just toot my own horn. I this, this card is Dang, it does nothing. <laughs> I, I mean, know yeah. this card. I knew this card was trash, but people were like, you know, oh, it's so good with doubling season effects and it's treasures. I think. I think the main thing was like as soon as people saw this card, people were associated like people were so tired of treasures when New Capenna was coming yeah, out. Yeah. Like people were like, we are so done with treasures. The treasures are have been have been like everywhere for the past like two years. And then Capenna comes out and be like, guess what? I hope you like treasures. <laughs> Boom, bootlegger stash. And everybody's like remembering like, you know, how strong Prosper is, how strong Ragavan is, side. how strong yeah, Dockside oh is. And you know, like how sacrificing your treasures to Corval, how all those fun times. And then boom, we have another, yet another one. And it, it seemingly makes the treasures the best, maybe. Uh, so people were like really negative about it. But like, what does it do? 
Do you really want to? Do you really want to not spend your mana three and store it up the petals. next day? Whenever you tap a land, you get a lotus petal. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, the the lesson is actually the same as Nyx Bloom Ancient, which is also on our list, which is just seven mana, five, five, triples up your mana. Anytime you tap something for mana, you get three times as much. I think the lesson is like, there's so many ways to make a ton of man, uh, mana in Commander already. Zendikar Resurgent and Mana Reflection. Like the list is super long. Doing that slightly better or slightly differently just doesn't, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't really matter. Like, Nyx Bloom Ancient tripling your mana, it's, it allows for cool moments, like the time I hit Krim for so much damage, but in practicality, lying, by the, way. the difference between that and doubling your mana just doesn't matter. So I think when it comes to these expensive cards that do something other cards already do, but slightly differently, there's not really a reason to freak out about those. That was one of my big takeaways. Like that style of card, it's not going to have the impact people think it does. It might look flashy and you read the text. And I think that's what Wizards is going for. Like three times as much mana. That's a jaw dropping like line of text on a magic card or tap land to make a treasure when everyone's hyped about treasures or like thinking about treasures. That's a, a an eye catching line of text. But the actual impact those cards have is much, much smaller because there's just like so many things that do that and they cost so much mana to get going. That's the other thing you'll see on this list. If it's like six, seven, eight mana, it's not actually going to be a problem. You might think it's going to be a problem, but like 99% yeah. of the time, those cards are not going to be a problem. The cards that might end up a problem are like free or like two mana yes. or three mana. Those are the cards and that might flash. actually, that might actually yeah, end up being problematic. I also want to say that these cards aren't necessarily bad. They're just more, uh, more narrow than you would They're initially fringe, yeah, think niche. they would be. Like, I think Nyx Bloom Ancient is a great card, but like, not in a mo non most decks. There are going to be particular decks that's really good. Same with Booker Like Your Stash. Like, it is an efficient way of making, it is, a, if you want to make a lot of treasure tokens, Can this is one way of doing it. When you said bootlegger stash, it was so fast that it just sounded like you rolled your tongue a ton of times. Bootlegger stash sees like a ton of play in treasure decks. In treasure decks and in token theme decks, it's like really good, but it's not a like ultra staple showing up in every green deck. Did people think that? Like there's certain decks where it's good, but. Like, did yeah, people... I think that when it was first spoiled, that was that was kind of at least some of the people thought it was going to be like, why wouldn't I play this in every green deck? But why why would you? Okay. <laughs> if you don't like sh like Shatterfang, for example, it's insane in this deck. If you it's insane for six mana, do nothing. But if you untap with it, you're probably going to at least get a lot of <laughs> squirrels. Nobody, I, I hope nobody just uses this to store mana because that seems very inefficient in 2023. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I didn't really get the hype about this one. Um, it's, it was probably just because it was treasures because it's six mana and it's an artifact. It's not too hard to remove. Uh, I did untap with it once and I played Shatterfang and it was glorious, but that's the only time I can imagine playing it. And Prosper isn't even green, so... Oh, it is probably... No, it isn't. Is it good in Core Vault? I think Core Vault wins if you have six mana anyways because you already played your Core Vault, so... Yeah, you don't... What, you don't what difference does it really make? Yeah. But yeah, so, like, these cards are good, but, like, they're not... They're very... They're more narrow. And then there's some cards that, like, are clearly scary, but, like, like you said, you... These are expensive cards, so it's not like uh, they're going to be jammed everywhere, and they they can be dealt with pretty easily. And one card that I remember people were like, oh my god, this is like the easiest ban ever, was Lord Xander the Collector, which also came in New Capenna. Uh, mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it's four uh, blue, black, and red, so seven mana Grixis, six, six, uh, Vampire Demon Noble. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand, rounded down. Whenever it attacks, defending player mills half their library, rounded down. And whenever it, uh, when it dies, target opponent sacrifices half the non-land permanents they control, rounded down. So Lord Xander does a lot of things targeting one opponent. 
And I'm going to tell you, I've been on the res- I've been on the receiving end of Lord Zender a couple times. A Seth, I think you played him in a oh, commander class, and you got a lot of value out of him. I think did Krim play play it yet? On oh, Thursday? I mean, I so. we we've played like you've played yes, my Xander deck at, at a, one of the command fest things that we went yeah. to. And honestly, but, I sweat every single time I see Xander, and I like I'm I'm just hoping they don't attack me because that that sucks. It hurts when you're getting when you're getting hit by it, but it's just like it's, it's a big seven mana thing. I don't know. Oh well. I mean, uh, I own this in paper. I I play it all the time, and it's, let me tell you, it's you. a lot of fun, but <laughs> it's not that good. Like it's it's like I love it. It's a fun card. It does everything <laughs> poorly though. Like fun. <laughs> like, fun. like it. I mean, it, it wrecks one person. Sure, yeah. sure. It wrecks one person, maybe. Like, like uh, outside of, like, the, okay, so the other two modes are the ones that I'm always just like, eh, it's really just a mill guy, right? And, like, yeah. what I do is I just try to kind of kind of clone Xander and, you know, Lord, Helm of the Host and stuff like that than anything else because it's it, it's why Xander clones is more fun to me because, I to be honest with you, the discard, once you get somebody once, it's almost pointless to get them again. Because you will yeah. never hit them with it again, uh, to, at least to where it does anything. So, I, I, and they will always, at the very least, have one card. So, I, I, I don't know. This has to be one of the worst cards people freaked out about. Just like power level, this card, it's not very good. It's not a, it only gets one player. You're playing a four player game. Like, you're only getting one person. But the freak out kind of makes sense because if you are that one person, Kind of like what we were talking about before, you're probably not going to get to do the thing you were hoping to do. You're like losing half your cards and then maybe losing half your creatures and seeing how all the cool stuff you put in your deck getting milled when you get attacked by it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like a psychological damage card. Like, I don't think it actually <laughs> it, does. it doesn't actually win the game or like actually do anything that powerful. But psychologically, it wrecks you because you're like, oh, no, like, here's all these sweet things I put in my deck to do cool things with. And now I'm discarding them and they're getting milled and getting sacrificed. I, 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 and you see that that's just one of those things in magic, right? Like, like that's another, I guess, thing to like kind of like talk about eventually. It's just like, is, I mean, so what? One, I, I don't know. Like, if I, if you wreck me, like psychological damage, like, come on, like, I, I, does that really matter in Commander? Like, what, like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why people are up in arms about like, you know, like, if, if I, if you just completely wreck me, that's fine. Like, I, somebody remember, has to get bodied first, right? Remember the game we played with uh, Justin Parnell a little while ago, and you like were playing Mill, and you just <laughs> and you just happened to like Mill all of his good cards, and how how just upset he was getting because it was all this like all my ramp, all my cool cards. It, like it's random, and you know logically it's random, and it's just like one of those things. But it's still in the heat of the moment. It still feels bad. So I, I think the psychological damage is real. Like I think it actually like I think it does matter to some extent. Also, when it comes to the card being overrated, the one effect that is always overrated is mill half a library. Whenever a card like this gets spoiled, it's always like, oh my god, this is this. Yeah, like kills half of your opponent, but. For some reason, I always see like, oh, if you copy this, then you just win the game. And it's like, no, it just really does nothing mm-hmm. except for well, psychological damage. Well, Unless I know. You, I, I'm pretty sure Krim adds like a Bruvac or something and you yeah, double it to Shaq sure. and then it's a one shot. Sure. No, it's still not a one shot. It's always rounded down. Oh, yeah. Well, they have one card. I mean, that's, yeah, right? that's good. For psychological damage. Yeah, <laughs> psychological <laughs> for your next turn. <laughs> enjoy, yeah. your, enjoy your card. Enjoy it'll your last. last. <laughs> I mean, that's, the, Lord Xander reads insanely scary, but the cool part about the card, which also came up when we played against him, it really feels like you're making deals with a mob boss if a player plays mm-hmm. this. And that's they can, true. Because they can always just target one creature. So it's kind of very flavorful that it's such scary text for just certain people so i actually like it as a commandment but for this one i remember the the, there were videos made asking for this to get banned so uh oh yeah Mm -hmm. i didn't understand it it was just a fun card and it basically did nothing like if you look at the most played commanders (laughs) and so forth that's it's pretty far down there. It's just like a janky, fun, fringe thing at this point. Or it's still a little miserable, but it certainly did not have any sort of impact that you need to ban it. Or you know what's funny? Somebody like somebody called me a spike because I like this card, and I'm just like, <laughs> what? 
<laughs> oh, wow. Crimson right. Spike with Lord Xander. <laughs> Lord Xander did not make the the most he has recent. Horns. It's spiky. Yeah. I am a literal spike, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Lord Xander didn't make this alt uh this alt score this year, the hun- top hundred. Not, he wasn't not popular even enough. Peaked in. Yeah. It's too spiky, <laughs> so, that's why. But, so but here's like, a card. Here's a card I would I would argue is a lot stronger than Lord Xander, but I also think that the community backlash against it was very overblown. Um, this is Turgrid God of Fright, uh, which came out of Kalheim two years ago, or last year. Um, it's uh, a mono black, sometimes commander, a uh, three double black, four five legendary creature god, menace. Uh, whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put the card from, from a graveyard, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It also has a backside, Turgor's Lancer, five, uh, four mana, legendary artifact, uh, target player loses, you can tap it, target player loses three life, unless they sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card, and you can pay four to untap Turgor's Lancer. Most of the time, you're going to be seeing the front side, though. Whenever an opponent sacrifices, like, whenever an opponent sacrifices anything or discards anything, you're going to get that permanent. That's Homer, that's what it, the card says. Our list today is like my Xander deck list. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> Krim's favorite cards. Yeah. <laughs> so really, this is just uh, an intervention about my favorite cards. <laughs> your cards I, your cards look scary, but they're not that impactful. Yeah, so that's actually pretty but this, true. Oh, this Jim card has is very strong. If you can pull it off. Yeah. I mean, it's... This card, <laughs> if you play Turgrid and you cast... I, there's not a lot of wheel effects in, in Mono Black, but if you have this as your commander and you cast uh, Dark Deals or something like that, something, it's, yeah. like a, it's like a windfall everybody uh discards and draws that many minus one or something like that yeah um you could just you and and you could get that early enough in the game you can just like wipe everybody's hands and get all their permanents and they can't really do anything about it because they don't have hands anymore um and that's that's pretty scary and that you could do like pox there's like different the small pox big pox regular pox death cloud there's um, xander Xander, I, yeah, um, Death Cloud, um, you would just uh, so you can make everybody discard and sacrifice permits, and you get all that stuff. And num, 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 Mind num. slicer, num num yeah. num num num. So this oh card God. is like real, like this card can be good, but like I think I played against it like twice. Ever. I I have and never like, played against it, but I see it sometimes in historic brawl, and I imagine the same in commander. I. I might be a bit ashamed, but I'm I'm just gonna scoop if it happens. If I <laughs> discard like three cards with Turgot on the battlefield and it's three creatures, yeah, GG. <laughs> I, I I for Turgot I I get it. It's the most frustrating. It feels like they're cheating. Like oh yeah, they played a mind. They, they are. No, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, you 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 should be able to deal with a five drop before they untap with it. But the effect, I I get it. It's the most unfair thing ever like you lose just everything on the spot uh like I, I get it i've never played against it in commander but i can imagine that i am not happy if they can put it off and if they don't put it off they are not happy so i get eh. it's like a nasa deck i i wouldn't really want to play against it like yeah if they do their thing it's over and if they don't i guess they didn't have fun i don't care for this if they just do nothing but Ugh, Turgrid seems very brutal. Good, good thing it's in not in I, blue because I I played against <laughs> it a decent amount. Um, it it's it's a powerful card and it's in an archetype where you can't just simply have the removal because usually the archetype denies you cards, <laughs> so oh, you yeah. not just have. Uh, but like legitimately, I haven't found it too problematic. Even though it, like, uh, <laughs> I did play against it once and I had my Specter deck, my Grixis Specter deck, and so all they got were really bad Specter. <laughs> also, every time I hit with a Spectre, my opponents yeah, gave then, oh, the Turgor player oh, a card. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't really kill me, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I I would say this is one where the freakout was justified. Like, I think players are probably right in this one. Yeah, it hasn't, like, broken the format or needed to get banned, but... It is very popular. It's like the top 60 commander. So it does, even though we haven't played against it a lot, overall, according to EDA, it is really popular. Rank number 62. Yeah. Rank 62. So it's, 
And it's like top four as far as saltiest commanders. If you go on the salt list, it's literally one of like even two years now or three years after it was printed, people still like have those same feelings as when it was first revealed and we're freaking out about it of like, I just don't like playing against this card. And it makes sense. Like if you look at the staples, people are poxing you and they're stripping you away your whole hand and just like, and it makes it even worse when you're talking about psychological damage. Seeing your cards milled is one thing. You know what's worse is seeing your opponent like make you discard those cards and then they get them all and kill you with them. It's like the ultimate form of commander psychological damage. So to me, it makes a lot of sense that, uh, that this card was disliked and it still is disliked. So I don't know. I think when it comes to this, like how else do players send a message to wizards not to print more cards like this? You freak out on social media or on Reddit. Like what else can you do? Not all of us, ha- you know, get to send messages to wizards and say, don't print yeah, this. Yeah. You get to like, we, we, to we not are not all it. in. Yeah. We're not in that position. <laughs> so what else can you do? But freak out on social media. I mean, I will- this is what. I will Sorry. say this card is justified with the the like you know the reaction much like Seth mentioned. Uh, I I think this should be banned as a commander personally, uh, but okay in the ninety nine banned oh, as sure. a commander. I think yeah. I I kind of agree with that because the the fact that what Turgrid's doing to get your cards is mostly mass discarding your hand, so yeah. you're removing the answers to Turgrid, right? Yeah, which is which is the hard part. It's not like Turgrid sits around just taking stuff off your library or something and then you have opportunities to remove turgrid it's like turgrid comes down then then the wheel happens or the pox happens and now you have nothing to fight back i don't know i still still don't think it's like man we're, it's a it is a miserable card but it, I don't it know. should be banned as a commander this is like yeah. they're, they're again i am pretty pro everything in commander this is one thing I think should be banned as a commander. What if what if you got a commander <laughs> that. that made Turgrid get sacrificed? A mono black commander that got banned, perhaps, unjustly, <laughs> and now I, might I, be I mean, able to is just all right. <laughs> yeah. so, like, if they... Unbanned free braids. <laughs> no, in ninety nine, sure, but back. not as commander. Bring back my girl. Yeah, yeah. Ninety nine is fine for bring both back those my girls. Girl. Yeah. yeah. She's not just bring her back. She's back as in the ninety nine. Right? <laughs> oh i but i gotta i gotta ask you guys about this next card because this one i remember a big freak out about this and that's jeweled lotus uh, jeweled lotus just it's black lotus your mana sack it make three mana but you can only spend that mana on your commander this was one that as soon as this was printed there was a huge conversation this is too good they shouldn't have printed it should it be banned uh, i i remember that conversation very clearly today it does see play, especially uh, kind of funnily in mostly CDH decks, I think is where you see it. Like the most high power decks are most likely to have Jeweled Lotus when casual decks are not as likely to have it. 7% of the meta, according to EDH rec. What do you think about this one? Is this a case where the freak out was unjustified or is the fact that it's like a hundred dollars just keeping people from <laughs> playing it? So it actually is busted, but we don't see it much because it's so expensive, no one wants to spend that on a Jewel Lotus outside of CDH decks that really need to be optimized. It, okay, uh, speaky, speaking outside of like CDH, because in CDH, I do think this card is huge. It's pretty good. It allows you to play commanders that aren't like, you know, two mana. Like being able to play Nimrus it, it, like early is real nice. So it's great in CDH, obviously. Regular commander, I think this card's kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know. I think this card's kind of bad. Like, hmm. like, okay. Outside of the one time where, like, it was pretty funny where Richard did get his turn one commander and then I sourced <laughs> it instantly. That was pretty funny. Uh, but, but, like, yeah, like, most of the times, I don't really like this in commander because usually you just get your commander down early and then it's just you just draw all the hate. Doesn't matter what you're doing. And it's a one off. It's a one off time, like, a one off time usage. And I think that's the main thing. Like, I just, I would, I th- obviously, I think Soul Ring is infinitely better, right? Because I can keep using it. Uh, I, I just don't like that one-off mana. I think this is okay in casual, uh, it, it, uh, also in some decks. I play it in my high-costed commander decks. So, like, my Dracuseth deck, I play it, or, like, a Lord Xander deck. Something where, like, the commander's, like, seven plus mana. I think it's fine there as well. So, I think it has a place in casual. Uh, it's not as busted as everyone thinks it is. I don't think it's like, and the and the sky is falling good. I think it's just, it's solid. I think it's 
it's so insanely good. <laughs> it's, I remember playing like turn four, turn three, Jinga Taxius. Sure, I was the enemy, but you barely managed to fight through it. And it, imagine it with Turgrid. My God. I mean, it's, I think it's like the tabernacle problem that it's so prohibitively expensive and people know that it's just ungodly broken because it's just a black lotus as long as you just spend it on your commander uh that people just police themselves and say like yeah i want to play this deck because if you play this card you basically say hey i'm playing cadh over here so you bring whatever and then tables especially if if they proxy cards then it might just get out of hand like one person said like oh i play jewel lotus and then next people person said oh here's a piece of paper it says uh, like uh, Mana Crypt. And I think Jude Lotus is like on another level. I think it should be, again, not asking for any bans, but if you play a Jude Lotus, you, you basically say, hey, bring whatever. I cannot complain about power level because you're playing a literal Black Lotus as long as you spend it on your commander. I I guess it's fair. I don't ever really complain about power levels. Yeah, oh, you don't. Yeah, that is true yeah I, I i don't know i mean i i think this card just okay in some decks it can be absurdly busted turgor but that's because turgor itself is pretty busted right so like like what you're doing like with your deck like if i cheat out a terrible seven mana commander who cares oh sure yeah like right like that, that so like <laughs> like it, jeweled lotus kind of just has intent with it right well, how, how are you building your deck but you can say that about every good card, though. If all your good cards, if all the best cards in the format are being used to cheat out bad cards, then they're they're not as effective. But obviously, most people are not cheating out bad cards. They're cheating out good cards and good commanders because the most popular commanders are very strong, usually. So, like, nine times out of ten, people are not jewel noticing out, like, a, a seven drop that does nothing, like a Colossal Dread Mod for six or something like that on turn three. They're going to be getting out, like, I don't know. What, Scarab Tur- God? Mm. Sure. Scarab God? Uh, yeah. Scarab, 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 Scarab God God's on turn two. Like, yeah, this uh, one maybe no, not. No, but like a, 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 a Jinkadaxius or a, a new sure, Mizzet Perun, you know, yeah. something something that's yeah, like Mizzet, actually yes. like a strong yeah, commander. Yeah, yeah, it just I, makes your commanders that much stronger. That's all it does. Is It, it, sure. it, ramps, it makes all your, all your commander decks stronger. It's, if you're bad deck... It becomes stronger, great, but if your good deck becomes stronger, then it's, like, just even more oppressive. Like, I don't know. I never liked this I, card. I didn't like it when it got printed. I don't like it now. I think it just doesn't get played because it's 100000 It's over $100. Just like $100, Mana Crypt. $100,000. No, Mana, yeah. Crypt's, Mana Crypt's in 13% of decks. Do you wow. think? It's yeah. it's arguably stronger than Soul Ring, right? So, and yeah. Soul Ring's at 84%. Do and, you think... I think and Joe Lotus is still like seven percent, so it's not like yeah. it's non-existent considering how expensive it is. I think that the price has a lot to do with it. I think the big issue with Jewel Lotus is is just the play pattern it promotes. Like we've talked about this many times, and our house ban list reflects this with like Soul Ring and Mana Crypt and even Jewel Lotus being banned. Like my least favorite party commander are just those like someone gets the all the fast mana snowball game. They, they get the CDH draw at a casual table and everyone else is like playing a land a turn and one person is dropping their seven mana commander on turn two. It just doesn't lead to a good experience. That's the only play pattern Jewel Lotus supports. Like that's literally all it does. There's no redeeming quality. There's no like even with Soul Ring or Mana Crypt, you could be casting a Mull Drifter or something that's like kind of cool out of it. Like all this does is cast your busted commander as fast as possible possible so for me i don't see any redeeming qualities and this is another one that's top 60 ish 63 on the salt scale this year so this is one that still makes the community salty which kind of surprised me considering it doesn't see that much play I, this, this is just so much. i i don't i don't like it any more than i like huh. soul ring well I, so I, my, my like i i think fast mana is whack anyways but i mean yeah. i have to play it right so like my issue is like as a card, this doesn't bother me any more than any other fast mana. I I just think it it, it promotes like sets like it promotes the games that I know you crim don't like, where it's just like everybody just shuffles up, somebody pops off and then wins, and no minimal interaction, and there we go and move on. Like if you're if you're you're if you're if you have these just jewel lotus starts where you're bringing out like a super powerful commander and you get it out three turns earlier because of the jewel lotus it's just like ugh. 
And, and, yeah. and on the Soul Ring thing, like, I think it is worse just because we can't do anything about Soul Ring. It was printed 30 years ago in Alpha, <laughs> or like Mana Crypt was printed 30 years ago. We had no idea that Commander would be a format. Wizards had no idea, but they did know when they printed a set called Commander Legends two years ago that that's a very controversial play pattern that some players really don't like, and they went full speed ahead with it anyway. So for me, it is worse just because Wizards has the knowledge now that they didn't have when they were printing the other broken fast mana pieces 30 years ago. Didn't they Fire consult design? the Commander? Right, like it's just one of so many free broken. Yeah, but you don't. The, all the all, all the broken mana is old. Like it, it was kind of weird that they printed like, I guess here's sure. Black Lotus would make yeah, sense. They'll more of. It. Yeah, didn't they? Because yeah. we have <laughs> consult the commander committee or I, Gruitz committee. I don't. I'd have to go back. I'm. I assume so, but I'd have I to read. So, I don't. Yeah. I don't remember. They did. I remember people on the the Urkag, at least. I remember, Do you remember Josh what the cries? response was? People were like, don't print this. <laughs> Please don't maybe, print this. I maybe the this. lesson of this is <laughs> the Wizards doesn't listen to the RC and the CAG. Because <laughs> it seems like every time what's they the, tell them not to print a card, it still shows the, up. What's the CAG? Uh, CAG is uh, a commander a, advisory group. Okay. They're basically it's like people a step who, below the rules committee, basically. There's the rules committee, and then they have a bunch of people that are the next level down that can like interact with the rules committee and talk to them and stuff yeah, where yeah, they don't yeah, actually have the full why power. Why do you listen to these? Yeah. Who are these people? <laughs> why, why do people like declare themselves as ambassador of commander? <laughs> and we say, yep, they can't influence wizards, but they can influence. I don't, maybe I'm not the well, right the thing person. They can influence <laughs> the ban list. Like, I think, I think like if you have, I, I don't think it's like our wizards have not, print stuff like print, wizards should print stuff but then like if you if you think a card's not good for the format then you control the ban list right so don't I ask wizards not to print list. stuff just it. ban things if you think it's gonna be an yeah. issue rip lutri <laughs> taken down I mean, lutri was the one that kind of makes <laughs> sense although yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just it would be an auto include and insanely expensive but as long as Sway the Stars is on there, I'm going to give so many. There's so many examples of <laughs> senseless cards on the ban list. Like, Prime like Time is banned and Dockside isn't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Ooh, wait, I feel like we've done podcasts about, we, we've done podcasts <laughs> about the ban list yeah. that we can probably pop up yeah. and people can listen to because it is a very interesting topic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's what about a yeah. Uh, what about another Commander Legends card? <laughs> one that uh i i you might have heard of it uh it's it's two in a black it's called opposition agent i don't i need to pull up what it does Disgusting. i think it's You've like never a, played this card before uh, yeah I, I, don't, I don't really play this card uh I, I, okay oh hold on i've never played around it so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's Me two either, in apparently. A black it's got flash your opponents or you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries while an opponent's searching their library they exile each card they find you may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. And it's a 3-2. Oh, this is a pretty cool card. I just found out about this right now on this podcast. Um, <laughs> so what do y'all think about this card? Because I know when I saw this, I was drooling and salivating, <laughs> and I was so hyped on this because I hate tutors, and this is just such a gotcha card. I love gotcha cards. And I thought it was absurdly balanced uh, because, to be honest with you, this got so much hate when there were other things that slipped More underneath than the reach, radar. Yeah, like, it, yeah, like it was like, so like similar. Like yeah, uh, I gotta say though, I hate the card. I do accept <laughs> that it should Good. exist, <laughs> but please, it would please say non-land. I don't like tutors should be a little controllable. But man, no, it then how causes do you stop fetch land so hard. So, what, no, what, you what about explosive you know, veggies? Don't, don't explosive so, veggies, sky shark. No, you got to shut all that down. No. Tutoring. <laughs> it's so I brutal. Have, what? <laughs> it is so brutal if you get gut when you, like, you're already mana screwed. And then you, like, crack your fetch. Or even if you imagine if you crack, like, a light wood step or whatever. Or <laughs> these, <laughs> these lands that crack for more lands when you're mana screwed. And that's the last thing that can get you out of this and then it hits the battlefield and it's forever over and 
To be honest, it, Phil, I promise yeah. if you just stop going right before my turn, it, it would. <laughs> I, I, <can't>. like, <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I do accept that. Yeah, this kind of effect is kind of cool. It's just super brutal with lands, um, which yeah, and lands needed. are already privileged because land destruction is yeah. off the table. So even though it, uh, that's another discussion. Why? But, why? Why is this acceptable and Elishorn's not? Why is it okay yeah. to be like, hey, you're playing a landfall deck. Sorry, you can't play magic. Well, that's perfectly acceptable on a three drop with flash that's above the curve stats. But a five drop at sorcery speed that says, hey, your ETB deck isn't going to work is, oh, my God, don't print it, wizards. Like, the, the, I think what's, the, what's the difference? Like, why can you hate on one thing and not the other? more things, too. Like, more decks will search your library incidentally. Every green deck focuses mostly on rampant growth effects over like mana dorks and whatnot or enchantment and ramp it, yes. and it like straight up keeps people from playing like if you get got yeah. by this yes, with your turn two ram does. spell you're just like out of the but game you just don't it, play magic but also but if Elshorn you can tutor it. an answer what are you gonna t- you can't tutor an answer saying yeah. off of nation. it's just there now now if you have any tutors to find a removal spell well they don't work so whoops. that's great that's and, great. Shut that you, down. You will, you will get caught. You will. Somebody will get caught. Like somebody's going to fetch because it's flash, right? Like Elshnorn sorcery speed goes onto the battlefield. You know that it's there. You're not going to accidentally enter the ETB whatever thing onto yeah. Elshnorn after you know what the card does. This one is like if they have three mana up, one of them black, they could have it at any time. Gotcha. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you're going to get caught at the very least. So I feel like this card is far more oppressive than Elshnorn. It's more. It's more powerful in terms of how many things it shuts down, and it's at flash. It's a cheaper rate, and it shuts down. It shuts down partially the way to answer, which would be tutor off for an answer to kill it. I, I I think I think that this actually shuts down probably less right than than a Elish Norn because Elish Norn does shut a lot because it's permanence. Well, like how many and, things? And- run rampant growth over like I don't well, know. Well good, get got green deck. <laughs> you know I think they like, both if L- they if both LD shut down isn't a lot. allowed. They both shut L- down a lot, yeah. Phil mentioned if L D isn't allowed, this is fine. So like like <laughs> right, it shuts it shuts down like the all the tutoring, which everybody, you know, like it's a singleton card game. Play it play it like one. So uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean I think this is gonna shut down a lot less than Elish Norn. But I do think that this is more aggressively costed. So, like, whereas, like, Elish Norn is still five. And as you had mentioned, Elish Norn, you're going to see Elish Norn. <laughs> this is, like, you know, in the shadows. So, I don't know. I At the end of the day, years removed now from Commander Legends, I think this was overhated. And still, you may you may not like the card, but I do think it's a necessary evil. Yeah, did anybody ever see it? With the commander, there's this commander that allows anybody, everybody to two turns instead of draw. From Did anybody uh, ever see Kaltheim. this? Because I think that was the, yes. yeah, I think that was like, because Halbreacher was in the same set with pretty similar stats and people yep. looked over it. Yep. When I saw it, I, I hate Narset's effect in general. So <laughs> Halbreacher was, I don't want to see stuff like this, but it's weird that people saw a position agent as worse than this. And yeah. we had we had a kind of a similar problem. Like this happens a lot of magic when Fury got underrated, but Grief got <laughs> overrated in modern. Like we always see like they are close. It is a pretty similar card to this that's a problem. But then Halbreacher got banned. And opposition agents, as Krim mentioned, lands have a little bit of a privilege of being, oh, don't destroy my lands so I can tutor them up. But oh it's so brutal. <laughs> I still don't like it, but I wouldn't like, I think it's a necessary evil, I guess. It's funny the time, if you're not the one getting God, but I hate, no, I hate it when it's on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> I've played yeah, against it, it a lot. I've been got by it. Like, I, when I, We've when this was previewed, lying. I was, I was yeah. a person who was like, this card is just actively bad. Like, it's not a, it's a bad card. It's negative, only negative, irredeemable. And I thought it was especially bad because it felt like, just during the time that white was kind of underpowered, I, 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 I would argue. And it felt like they took Avon Mind Sensor and they're like, let's just make it way better than Avon Mind Sensor and let's make it, it black. black. <laughs> so yeah, and send it straight to black. And I'm like, okay. And same with Hall Breacher. It felt like the card draw denial is like, let's take Adelon of Redelic and just make it blue and make it 10 times better than that. So I didn't like it for those reasons as well. But now that I played with it a lot of time, I kind of feel like stacks cards 
are not only good for magic, like they're 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 an evil, a necessary evil, but they also have to have upside for you to be playable. Because like I don't play Dranith Magistrate because it does nothing for me. It just gets me hated out. But opposition agent at least gets me a card out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're going down cards to play some of these like if you're not full stacks, light stacks is like kind of weird. Because you're yeah. going down a card. So, and like unless it's something real good like Thalia, Heretical Thar or whatever. Yeah. Or, or like an opposition agent. Oftentimes it's like you know, I kind of really didn't do much. So I think if you're like, that's why this card is great. Like we, we've all seen it. We've all seen. It. I've been got Phil got me with it. All right, yeah. Phil got me. I so I do. Fuck I do. That. I got me. I love it. Yeah. Well, well, I kind of got my. I kind of got myself actually. I think, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you and called Tomer shot. Or, called, like, shot. You called it and you played right into it. I don't. I don't know why you did that. We both have it. I do kind of think people would be much less salty if it excluded lands. I think that might be the sweet spot for this card. Like, uh, I don't know. I feel Over, like overhated, taking or deserved. But shouldn't you hurt? Shouldn't green players also get like as an artifact aficionado? Who, I play. I play a lot of artifacts. I get board wiped all the time. Lands get untouched. I kind of feel like green should get 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 got a little bit sometimes too. I don't know. They should feel my pain. It's, yeah, that's it's necessary. That's what I mean. I get it that green is kind of like this free pass for ramping. But on the other hand, like, I love opposition. Like, the effect of opposition agents is a pretty cool way to hate on two tours. But then afterwards, <laughs> it stays on the battlefield and just says, hey, don't crack your fetches or oh, this. Yeah, all this I mean- mana ramp just doesn't work anymore. And you're sitting there saying, like, oh, this just... Oh, no, I can't what is the magic. what is the token one? Uh, is it crafty oh, cut purse? Cut purse. Yeah. I wonder if it should be worded it's like, like that. Token? Oh, if where it's like well, so crafty cut turn. purse is for tokens, but it's if it entered the battlefield this turn, it does it. Yeah. So you'd be able to opposition agent and get someone with it once, and then it's just a normal creature rather than Ooh. the static ability that's shutting oh down everyone God. for the rest of time. Ooh. Let's hope no, they don't. Be like, oh, but you can get like a one mana version of that, a one mana opposition agent until end of turn. No, you play this to host. uh, No, you like. I would for opposition agent that would feel fine. I think, although I'm not in camp, make opposition agent as strong as possible. I just fear that now wizards will print the cut purse as a permanent effect, and that will, oh, that will get some hate. (laughs) Like that really shuts down token decks. I've never seen the card, by the way. Respect if you ever pulled it off. Four mana is a bit, a bit much, no. Yeah, four mana two two is not yeah. that great <laughs> stats wise, unless you know you're going up against tokens. Yeah, yeah. For position, I, I've come to the side that I think agents okay, but like I do, I do see how it is annoying to deal with it. The the combination of flash cheap, it also shuts down ways of answering it are just like hard, hard. Hard, hard to deal with, like uh, as opposed to Elsh known, which is five it. sorcery speed and doesn't prevent you from finding an answer. Were you really um, gonna tutor up a doom blade? I, yeah, man. or non doom blade effect? You, you weren't gonna do. You, you weren't gonna if, do that. You if I'm in green, yeah, I need to freaking cast my rampant growth and stuff. But if you're in green, you're already at like 92 mana, so just play like, <laughs> a, like a like a, a massive creature. <laughs> I'm, you I'm accepting. I'm accepting of it, but I will say I will not buy the Elish Norn as like a problem if opposition agents no. fine because they do they have the same sort of impact in different ways and opposition agents just so much cheaper. Okay, well, what about what about a card that is very similar to agents and they actually did ban it? Um, this is Hull Breacher. Uh, what do you guys think about the Hall Breacher ban? For people who don't know, this card was also printed in the Commander Legends. We're sensing a theme here. Uh, two and a blue, uh, Merfolk Pirate Flash. And if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead you draw, instead you create a treasure token. Uh, so they just don't draw the card. You make the treasure token. To be clear, to be clear, like, if they would draw the, a card beyond, the, the first one they would draw in their draw phase, they don't, and you make a treasure token for this. God, no. This card Disgusting. is so fair. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, this is the, this <laughs> card is justifiably banned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this card is justified. I, I think if it, if it didn't, if it didn't, uh, if it only worked on your opponent's drawing cards and not with windfall effects, I would have been yeah. okay with this. Do, do you remember I think that's what I And it would still be very strong. 
Do you remember when I played huh? Party Jace and I upped Party Jace and I just oh made a bunch of treasures? Disgusting. I was like, oh yeah, this is this is not fair. <laughs> like yeah. at all. Like this disgusting. is disgusting. That, that's that really was a problem though, that you can just combo with it so easily. Mm-hmm. Where you wheel and you windfall and you party jace. Uh, like Tomer said, if it only worked with your opponent making themselves draw cards, it would be a very powerful oh, hate yeah. effect. Like yeah, I think it, it would, would be still annoying be like all star yeah. and super yeah. annoying. But it would not probably be bannably broken i would say and it would be better than the opposition agent but it and it'd still be annoying it has the same issue it's flash uh so you always get somebody from drawing the cards and it no. shuts down an ability like the ability to find answers by you know i could draw more cards and find an answer Way or something worse, like that. though like all these not said uh notion thief probably even worse i had the most fun in magic is drawing cards and shutting this down is like yeah Mm-hmm. I I do play Notion Thief sometimes, so I can't really complain because it draws cards for me. <laughs> it so is I, your card draws. Yeah, spell. it's like Elishman. <laughs> like, oh, it's cool if I do it, but please don't play it against me. Well, no, Hal Breacher was giving free mana with this effect was kind of. I mean, uh, I don't. That basically it's, made it a free spell. Yeah, well, you would cast this and immediately get your mana, mana back most oh, of right, the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Even it's if it didn't work with wheels, so it would be better that it didn't get picked up like jeweled lotus and opposition agent and the whole set like commander legends had so many bombs that i guess it wasn't really a sky is falling card right it was like oh now that we play it the sky is actually on our hats now so the sky yeah, fell fire but we didn't expect it. i i also wondered too if this is a little bit of the opposite of what i was talking about before where i was like a little worried about focusing too much on commander and not on other formats with hull breacher and opposition agent i wonder a little bit if wizards twisted some knobs to try to make them legacy playable which they like actually ended up being legacy playable and ended up making them way too overpowered in commander as a result because they tried to make them like super efficient and playable in these 60 card formats so i wonder sometimes if wizards just is trying to do too much sometimes they want every player of every format to buy every set and then sometimes that leads to things breaking Hmm. Well, yeah. So sometimes the sky might be falling. Uh, but there's one more card, at least one more card that I wanted to mention that was kind of funny that people were really excited about or really uh, scared about. And that's Lithoform Engine. And I think this was like our preview card. Was it not? I think so. It, it actually I want to say it was yeah, a preview yeah, yeah. card. I think we yeah, talked I'm about it on sure. the podcast, like one of the early podcasts. Um, for those who don't know, Lithoform Engine is a four mana legendary artifact and it has three activated abilities. The first one says two and tap it. Copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, you can pay three and tap it. Uh, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, and then four and tap it. Uh, copy target permanent spell you control. The copy becomes a token. So you can either use it as like a Rings of Bright Hearth or, or a Strionic Resonator, or you can like twin cast or something, uh, and it's another sorcery, or you can copy a permanent spell, which is very neat, but it's four mana. And to use its first, like to use it, you need to spend at least six mana to get uh, its effect one time. I was in the camp that this was going to be an auto include. I remember there was there was a lot of hubbub being like this card is is busted. I remember the RC was mentioning how this is a generic staple. Oh boy, do I remember. Oh boy, <laughs> do I remember how wrong I was. Don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! This how is many so... where does this see play in? Let's see. Let's see I... on Let's see the a, stats on this one. Safely, there's only been two decks I've played this in. And I play it's it in so Munich, niche. Yeah. It, it's, so it's a bit niche. like uh, I, Helm of I play Lost, it for fun. Right? Like, it's obviously mm-hmm. super cool, but it is so much setup cost. Yeah, 2% yeah. of all decks. It, it's pretty generically good, but didn't we learn enough so we saw the mana cost as a red flag <laughs> as a staple? <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember... Although I do remember thinking it was better than it turned out to be. But this is staple, Alish Norn. Like, <laughs> as a staple, you really have to pay the four mana to copy a permanent, right? You can't say, oh, staple, I have super cool activated abilities in every deck and have room for four mana do nothing. 
Yeah, that's, I like the cop though, that, but just at first, deck. that's what it was. Like I did, I yeah. jammed it in everything, and it was a four mana do wow. nothing. I was like, ah. yeah. Yeah. It's good yeah, in some decks. Here. If you yeah. want, if you want another Rings of Bright Hearth, it's another Rings of Bright. If you oh, want yeah. another Strionic Resonator, it's another Strionic Resonator. You it's a little bit worse. An expensive one, yeah. And it's an a little bit worse version. at everything it tries no, to do. This deck is good in that Mishra deck, Phil. I know you like yes. Mishra. Oh, I, I, I play it in Mishra. Yeah. Mishra. Yeah. I have well, it. Uh, imagine uh, copying a portal to Phyrexia. Oh, I don't have the portal yet. I might have to buy the portal to get it. So you copy the portal and then you can untap it and copy the triggered ability of portal. Cool. What do you mean it's expensive? It's like eight euro on card market, Phil. What? Portal. No, I mean yeah. Portal to Phyrexia. Oh, Portal's expensive, yeah. No, yeah, Portal to Phyrexia. Today. Nah, I checked today and it was 20. I, I got the Mishra deck and I'm really no. thinking about Portal to Phyrexia. I'm not saying about Lethal M- M- Form Engine is in the deck, in Old Border. No, no, no Portal, Portal to Phyrexia. I'm ch- I'm checking. Sure you know, you're sure you're not uh, meaning Phyrexian Portal? Yeah. No. I, I think as you're as you're checking I'm prices, sure. I, I think check. the I think the takeaway is expensive cards are fine in Commander. <laughs> like again, we mentioned this earlier, okay, you're but right. you're like if you're gonna cost so much mana to activate and a bunch of mana to get on the battlefield, you're probably not gonna break anything. So I think as you're freaking out about future spoilers, Fraxia is coming up. I think it actually starts the day this podcast release will be into spoiler season. Keep that in mind. If it's like a bunch of mana, it's probably not actually going to be broken. It's the cheap cards. It's the cheap cards you want to keep an eye out for because those are the ones that might actually be a problem. Free spells are always the problem. <laughs> I, I I have always figured out. And it's kind of interesting because like back when we went to uh, new Phyrexia and we learned about Phyrexian mana, like that was the main takeaway. Everybody knew that, oh. hey, for casting spells that are good for no mana, that's a problem. Yeah. Then maybe maybe don't print Fierce Guardianships. That's yeah, there's good. one on this list. Uh, do that. that was a Sky Spawn card. card. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Fierce the Sky Guardian. literally did fall. Yeah, just, I mean, I free if you have your commander, negate three mana otherwise, like counters yeah. a non creature spell. Two um, and a blue instant uh, counter target non creature spell, but you can also just pay it for zero if your commander is out, which the format's about. So who would have thought then? <laughs> the I other mean, one is cast it's, for free. A, it's a mistake. <laughs> I think the white one of those and the blue one are the problems. The other ones are fine, I think. The red one is the red one is the next best. The red one's pretty good, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't feel un. It feels a little unfair, but. Uh, yeah, like uh, fierce guardianship. Is fierce guardianship to me is like uh, the lotus or like mana crypt, where like if you yeah. can include these cards, your deck is on another level. Like, don't bother trying to rank your deck as a seven because everything's a seven. You not, just look out for these cards because it's these cards are just so over the top of everything else. Uh, yeah. I have it in my Brood of Cloud deck, and I know it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, oof. if I would have one, I would throw it in my deck, but then say, hey, play whatever. I play a free counter spell <laughs> yeah. to, play, to yeah. counter whatever. So, yeah, at this point... It's, yeah. it's my Brood of Cloud deck also has Urza and Cyclonic Rift and oh, everything, so it's just yes. like, yeah. Uh, except for the Rift, you should probably yeah. not, probably not play. And but this Urza. doesn't even make you discard a card from hand, like Force of Will or Force of Negation. Like, yeah, those... Ugh. It's, there's no play it's around. Brutal. It's always online when you have your commander out. Protects your commander. Good. I, good. I, I, good for I, a I mean, I'm I'm guilty of playing this in <laughs> every deck. Every. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's because I've always thought of these cards as a big plus. Not just this. I'm talking like Deadly Rollick. All those things. I know I'm in, like now in the minority uh, because I think that I like things that encourage you for just casting your commander. Like, yeah, you're already going to do it anyways, but I like knowing that I can play it and then protect it. I can play it and not just have it blown up and then never get to play it again because it's some high-costing thing, right? I, I like it, – it's, it's free, and it makes me feel not bad for tapping out for my commander. But and that goes for just, just not draw go. If it's free, you should at least discard a card for it. Is it just free? Uh, but but in Commander, right? Like I w- I think it's good to incentivize people to play their Commander. That right? is true. And, and they're gonna do it anyway. No, but not now Seth. you're more 
Yeah, well, yeah, like so that's a and, special but, case, all right. Is there, you think Gibbs think he's playing modern? I'm gonna it's be like, real why with is there two you. more I people crying. here? I keep crying, yeah. Before this cycle, I never casted my commander, and I, Seth, I, I don't know if it's because you found Boros or these cards made you feel like you want to cast your commander more. So that's the only thing I don't know because, like, I, cause I think these I, things were a positive. <sighs> I Whoa. I do not think these cards are a positive. Like I do cast my commander more now, but I think I don't think it's because of these cards. Because I uh, sometimes I play flawless maneuver, but in general I try to avoid these cards because I just dislike them on a on a personal level. I dislike these cards. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to see how this these, these are positive. They seem so forced to me. That's my biggest they concern with them. It's just like such. It, like uh-huh, forced uh-huh. commander staples it was from that year when wizards did this with commander legends they did it with the precons where they were just trying to print all these like broken commander cards and i think that the communities freak out like because the sky was falling and because everyone yelled about these cards i think it kind of ended up leading to positive change because wizards hasn't been printing cards like this since then in the last couple of years so I think that maybe the freak out ended up being positive for the game and the format in some sense, because I think Wizards actually got the message. I did have a brief chat on Twitter with one of the people who was responsible for like Dockside, for example. Like he he pushed for it to be as good as it currently is. And this was like the same era that the Ikoria decks were printed and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Glenn Jones, he's now on Marvel Snap Team, principal principal game designer at Marvel Snap. Did he get he left Wizards? Did he get fired for printing Dockside in its current form? <laughs> no, but he was, he was snap definitely with you. very pro fire design. <laughs> and basically, his philosophy was print the scary cards because scary cards are very exciting, and uh, they're going to bring more people into the format. They're going to get people excited for product. Like scary is exciting, so print the scary cards. Uh, but hmm. for something like something like Dockside, and I guess probably he's going to say for I didn't ask him about Fierce, but I did ask him about Dockside. Nowadays they have like people who will play test and say no to things that are too scary. But back then they were just didn't they 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 either miss on certain cards because they're not very powerful in the precons when they're playing the precons against each other, or like Dockside. Dockside was they did nerf versions of it and it was too weak, but then when it was like as it is right now, it felt fine in precons. He says, uh, but also like they miss and they or they don't play. They didn't have a play test, the proper play testing up, but they were very much like print the scary stuff. If you're, if you're not really sure, it's be- he says he said it was better to uh, like miss high than miss low. And that's 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 the huh. result is these I mean, cards. But I think the, the philosophy <laughs> did change. Hopefully. I don't know if I agree Thank with God. that philosophy, but that does actually ring true for that year. Like even thinking of companions and just like so many ridiculously broken things were printed during that era so Excite it seems like the that's player what they base. were doing and then ruined standard <laughs> in all their formats forever <laughs> i don't get that yeah, you like, got us <laughs> i i found a play group of old friends of mine that now play magic or one of them played some of them played earlier but we are i'm back on kitchen table magic with them and i like imagining playing a dark side and then saying, "Oh, look, you win against this, uh, you lose against this right now," and <laughs> it just for some reason creates way too much value. And who wants? Who told them that new people like if if it should attract play? What what do you say that scary cards attract players or something? That would greatly discourage me from playing ever again if I see this in my early days of Magic. Like now, I can accept it and say, "Oh." I hate this card. I'm not going to play it, but like for mm. it's not exciting, right? It, yeah. It, I, it's better when it's a commander. Like you said, Golos, he thinks Golos brought a lot more people into commander than it pushed away people from that commander. Can, yeah, Golos I can was see fun, that. at least. Like for the person yeah. who played Golos, yeah. oh my God. But Dockside is just pure overpowered. There's nothing cool about it. So it's like, oh yeah, this effect shouldn't exist on a two drop. On a five drop, baby, sure. I I will say though, remember they're trying to sell cards too, so yeah. maybe part of that is like we sold a lot of precons, and then even just this year, like Dockside was the biggest card people were upset about not being in Baldur's Gate, and then hyped about being in Double Masters. Oh, wow. So it's still like paying dividends mm-hmm. two years later because they printed the they printed the scary card, and now people just really need the scary card. So from a business perspective, even if it like ends up being a little bit of a negative for the format and people complain about how busted it is 
it, they're probably laughing all the way to the bank. Like from a business <laughs> perspective, it's probably working, yeah. honestly. I cannot fault them. Like I cannot like Jeweled Lotus is a brilliant design. Like you printed a black lotus in command. How exciting is that? Like I can understand yeah. these cards are super exciting, even if I think they're overall bad for the format. But if they turn out to be overall bad in the format, then you know there's such thing as a ban list, but like it just doesn't get utilized. For, for, for ban list That's for the cards problem. like Elishnor. For cards like Elishnor. <laughs> oh, yes. Get them out there. That's like, come <laughs> on. You can't have oh, <laughs> You <laughs> have fire. That's too strong. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyway, uh, I think we covered basically all of the skies falling. Oh, wait. Nick no, I guess I guess we talked. Mention it. There's one. There's one more that I wanted to mention as a group of cards. Uh, this was definitely probably like the 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 biggest rift. I've ever seen in the format where people were even actu- actually asking for a new format, a, a splinter format even, <laughs> uh, the Walking oh, Dead yeah. cards. This is the introduction of uh, Universes Beyond. And I'm going to say, just in hindsight, probably you shouldn't start with this franchise with it because if you want to win over the support of people, people, you should probably should have started with, I don't know, uh, Warhammer. People love Warhammer, it seems. <laughs> Not so much Rick from The Walking Dead. <laughs> wow, this, wow, you ne- just don't appreciate yelling Negan Carl and his every bat time. Lucille. <laughs> Yo, Carl. You clearly just don't appreciate Guns yelling Guns kill Carl. people, Carl. <laughs> Has uh, anybody ever seen Carl. them? They kind of looked like cool magic card. They just looked off. Do they? Like, and I <laughs> still think they do. So you've seen one, Krim. I, mean, I, I Rick played I've seen them. Oh, you <laughs> played them. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I, I straight up played them. <laughs> okay, it's, it's amazing in humans. I I don't yeah. like so it opened this Pandora's box of universes beyond, and it to this day, like I think about playing Soundwave in Manus Kaga. Like I ordered it, and I for my Mishra deck, like, I found like I opened this motorcycle, this Rakdos, whatever transformer, and I threw it in the deck because why not? But I still haven't drawn one of the Transformers yet, and I'm pretty sure that when I draw it, I say this. Nah. Sorry, my immersion got, just got broken. And it all started with... In your Marnius Calgar deck, your immersion got broken. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right there. I, mean, I played Warhammer, so that's fine. Uh, also, in my Calgar deck, I reordered all these... De- I, I play the Space Marine Devastators because I can't get them otherwise. And the Saga as well. But other, I just play these two cards from the Kaga deck. And I ordered the Talisman and stuff in other versions. Because I... It breaks my immersion. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously a super superficial pro- problem just for me. If you don't care about this. Or if you even love The Walking Dead. But I do... I do get it. I ordered the... Um, the backside... Like the, the flip land that f- flips into the... Stranger Things world. I ordered this in the oh. Magic Universe version because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, maybe it's beca- like it's I, sometimes I haven't played it in a while now, but sometimes I play Fortnite and even there I try to not use a Darth Vader skin or something. Just feel like it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. It's there. <laughs> so I don't like I the like- I like the cards from Walking Dead, but Sure. I I don't like the box it opens and the floodgates <laughs> that were, yeah. It's it's not. I don't like it. But I'm very anti universe beyond even even to this day. I think it was an overall bad for the game. Yes. But uh, I do at, at the very least like the fact that they usually have in universe stuff. But then I don't like the fact that like something like Transformers. You know, if you want to play Slicer, you got to play Slicer. You can't play an in-universe thing. And, like, I love, I love like, the Commanders for Friends Forever, the the Stranger Things cards. Like, the in-universe squares are all these industry badasses. Mm-hmm. They have sweet names, and I want to get... They look so awesome. And I got super hyped to play these cards. And people who like Stranger Things, they, they have the Stranger Things versions, and I have the in-universe version. And so that's like the middle ground where I'm appeased. I don't, I still don't like Universe Beyond. I never did, but at least I have the Indie Universe version for some. I think it's, I think it's important to point out that when the sky was falling with Walking Dead, that was not a thing. Wizard says that wasn't a thing. Like all the copies of these that will exist forever were the ones that are sold. Why the secret lair drop is in sale. So if Rick breaks out and is super popular, it'll be hundreds of dollars and that's tough luck and won't print anymore. So 
I think because this guy was falling, we got in universes cards, which solved like oh, it solved your problem, Tomer. You're just saying, or a big part of it. So I think that because this guy was falling, Wizards made steps that did kind of fix one of the biggest issues, at least with uh, the Walking Dead secret lair drop. So I think it was justified. Like I think at mm-hmm. the time, with what Wizards had announced at the time, I I still stand behind freaking out over that because I really think that there were. We've seen in the past, like many times, Nexus of Fate, Mana Crypt, even like releasing cards in a time limited manner and being like, you get a week to buy them and then there's no more forever. That is really risky. Hope they're not like some really bad or... Yeah. <laughs> so I think at the time, the, the sky kind of was falling, but because well, everyone freaked out so much, we got some positive changes. It's we still, still weird sometimes, the... but. Do we have an ET on, on The Walking Dead? Like it's been, what, three years? No, they. I think they did they said say they, they were really- going to do them, but yeah, we haven't we haven't seen them yet. But because of the the freak out over the Walking Dead, they did start doing it for other crossovers, yeah. like the the whatever the the other secret layer drops, so. Street Fire and Stranger Things. Yeah. I would get another Manius Kaga if they if we get an in universe version. I would actually get it as much as I love Warhammer. I even I just don't like just mix and matching IPs there. It's so, I. If you like this, sure. I kind of like. I even order original tokens for every card that I play. I, I really like everything as it should be there. <laughs> we're all on this. We're, we're all on like the anti universes beyond. I think, but Krim, I know, is definitely a supporter. What what's the uh, what's the Krim perspective here? I mean, <clears throat> to balance it out. My, my 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 only gripe with universes beyond was solved after this. Which was that I just despised the fact that like the the way they released it, you couldn't oh, yeah. you you couldn't it wasn't easy to get it right, and it was like a once in a like lifetime thing at that point because yo what if you know like once this is done it's done you won't get Rick, so that was the only thing I disliked. I at to this day still think Universes Beyond is one of the best things to have happened to Magic. Uh, and that is, it, it's, it sounds like blasphemy, but it is great in a world of multiverses. It, it's great for planes. I mean, we're getting a, like something potentially Doctor Who, who knows what, uh, we're getting Lord of the Rings and yeah, sure. We got Walking Dead and that may seem out of place, but then again, you know, like there's other things. There's just so many things to be excited for in the world of magic now. And especially in Commander, when I was already going out and getting cards altered, I may not at. I, I like I may not actually need to get altars, right? Like where it's like, oh well, you know, like hey, I was going out to get a Star Wars altar. Well, how long until I just get a literal Darth Vader card, right? Oh uh, so gosh. so like <laughs> like like it sounds weird. What's happening? It, but like, is it is it that bad? Like, I mean, I I think it's a great thing for Magic. Um, I mean, look, I we, we talked about this in the other podcast. Magic had thirty years; it couldn't do it. What it they had a good run. It. It, yeah, well, it's not that it's done for <laughs> it's, for universe beyond in standard, right? Like Richard yeah, loved yeah. it. Yeah, I I think and Richard and I are pretty firmly in the camp of like, yo, universes beyond is pretty dang good, right? And yeah. like, it's because you know the IP. I know I love Magic. I've been there since day like like middle school. So it's not like I'm just this new age like, hey, what's up, new art? Like like, uh, <laughs> but like I I've been there for a lot of Magic and. I don't know for the like the for someone who has this feels like the perfect product for me. You can call it whatever you want, consumer, yeah, 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 crim, whatever. But like, I just have multiple hobbies, and it's beautiful when your favorite when all your hobbies come into one. So I love seeing this for Commander in a casual format where I and uh, like you know it's where you express your hobbies and the things you like. So why not do it all in one? Yeah, I gotta admit it's. Like the Max from Secret Layers, the only card with a skateboard in it. So, I guess I feel represented. I'm sure <laughs> not that I care about this. Yeah, wait, wait till we get the Tony Hawk pro, like Secret Layer, and then, and then that's and then, that's one thing I I t- ask Tony myself Hawk's sometimes. Tony Hawk's gonna ollie over, yeah, over like, Eagle Bolus or something. <laughs> yeah, like which Secret Layer Universe Beyond would get me? I, I guess if I get a like a Smash Bros. one with Captain Falcon as a card, I would <laughs> feel like. That I have to buy it, but I'm still <laughs> not sure that anything. But you'd still be. In. I bought I bought <laughs> like the Metal the Gear one, stars, and I bought like, the Street Fighter the, one for my. Okay, my the Metal Gear dog. one. Metal Gear looked bad as as at least like the yes. Transformers to me just look goofy, and uh, with 
Hmm. With the Lord of the Rings thing, it is something. So for the Lord of the Rings, I would prefer it to be like the movie Aragon, like the actual actor. Uh, because I don't, I, I love the movies, but I kind of, I don't know, care if they, they reimagine everything. Sure. It just looks like, I think the Lord of the Rings thing would be something else. I think because it will just look like they're not using anyone from the movies, right? So I'm not going to recognize anything and it's just going to look like magic cards. Who knows? I don't think we sure. know anything yet. Oh, I, want I think we saw like a panorama oh. picture and didn't. Oh, I well, want my Gandalf <laughs> and Elijah Woods as Frodo. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, actually. Well, that'd I'm probably be sure. a little too expensive. Was there probably oh, yeah. a big royalty to all them to do? With that? <laughs> to get I mean, Sir I, Ian McKellen yeah. would be like... Oh, yeah. God, would be kind of yes. sick, though. Like, oh, it would be so cool. I'm, I'm, I, I guess I would love this, but, man, I'm contradicting myself. Yeah. <laughs> I... I uh, I, I'm worried about like diluting the brand. I really don't like Gandalf fighting against like Marnius Kalgar yeah. <laughs> and c- calling out Pikachu as a companion or something. Like I don't know. It's not. It's not really for me. But I do like the middle ground of having in universe cards. But then Wizards of the Coast now re- removing that aspect too. Like I'm opening a Brothers War boosters and i'm excited about urza versus mishra and i have slicer in my pack and i love slicer but i want an in universe slicer that'd be great and now we're going into lord of the rings oh, and it's your it's modern cards you're not going to get any in universe cards of gandalf you just have gandalf and frodo oh, and oh yeah the, the name kind of sucks you're right like i would love <laughs> like, it to be like the and I love Lord of the Rings. <laughs> sounds so off. I, I say, play your Gandalf. It could be Gandalf could be a magic card. The problem is we already sure. associate it with Lord of the Rings. But if Lord of the Rings wasn't a thing, yeah, yeah a, no, a it's, magic character. It's very adjacent, but it's yeah. like I don't know. Anyway. I hate Lord of the Rings. So oh, <laughs> one last so hot take on the way out the door. <laughs> yeah. Lord of the Rings sucks. Oh, wow! Wow! Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. wow! That's Fair something for that, that I agree on. <laughs> wow. Oh we no, both, Chris! We both don't like Lord of the Rings. So Phil, hey, you like yo, this, Lord this, this Lord of the Rings drop the set. I'm happy for y'all if you like that. <laughs> wow. I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it actually. Even, but even if it means what? I have to play Frodo or whatever, You're all like magic oh, dude. nerds, how do you not like Lord of the Rings? <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. I mean, it's I all the same. Sh- it's all the same That's... stuff. You love elves uh, and dwarves and goblins and and yeah. dragons. That's way too long and boring. Whoa! <laughs> I, I, I've never read the books. I've never read the books. We, need to, books. we need to wrap up this podcast so. before we get canceled. All right. Uh, I think that covers it. Sky is falling. Cards. Let us know what cards that came out. Uh, that people thought were going to ruin Commander and uh, what their effect actually was in Commander. And That's always fun to hear. What do you think about our takes and everything? Yeah, and, and the opposites. If, if the opposite happens. Yeah. Were, the, were there any cards that like nobody thought about when it came out and that it just like had an enormous impact in Commander? Even if they didn't get banned, but like they just... <laughs> Smothering Maybe time. they didn't get banned. Oh, those. God. <laughs> like it just goes well, for example. <laughs> Smothering them. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's it for everybody. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back next week with another topic coming soon. Until next time, friends. See ya.